Hi, Beth. It's Jay. I'm calling you. I want to talk to you about your product, Jam Bios. That's Beth Carvin. Hi, Beth. Yeah, Beth, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Thanks, Jay. Good to be here with you. Oh, good. Okay. So uh, here we are. We're talking about Jam Bios and a couple of thoughts. Try any of the CEO of Jam Bios. Where, where's your headquarters? I know you're focused in Hawaii, but where's your headquarters physically right now? Our headquarters are in Honolulu and in the Harbor Court building. I happen to be in Kauai and split my time back and forth, but our headquarters are over in Harbor Court. We got a great spot and a wonderful team. Oh, great, great. So I wanted to tell you two short stories. One short story yeah. is when I was a kid, uh, my buddy lived in the same apartment building in Queens. His father was into technology. And we were looking at television. Television had just come out one day, and his father was sitting there with us, and he said, you know, someday the television will talk to you, and you'll talk right back. Whatever he says, you can respond immediately. I said, nah, that never, no, that can't happen. And look, we're well into that now. The second short story is, uh, as I told you before, um, I was sitting with my buddy like 10 years, 15 years ago, and it was probably oh, maybe the late 90s. And we was, I remember where we were sitting when this conversation took place. And we were talking about, you know, maybe a time capsule for individual use, a time capsule where you could, you know, put your thoughts down and, you know, the experiences of your life down for future generations to look at. Because otherwise, you know, it gets lost and you don't know. I don't know what happened to my grandparents. I have no idea. And wouldn't it be great if, if, uh, if they could talk to me now? So that's what you're doing with Jam Bios, isn't it? That is exactly what we're doing with Jam Bios. And back when you and your buddy had that discussion, there probably wasn't a really great way to do something like that. And now we have the internet and all these things become possible. Yeah. Well, how did you get into such a thing? Because it is, it's ambitious and creative and it really, as far as I'm concerned, on the social, you know, the social aspect of it, it really meets a need, not, not only for me, but for everyone. But how did you get into this? What's, your, what's the track of your career in terms of technology and entrepreneurship? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. And my background is as an entrepreneur um, for a number of years. I moved to Hawaii in 1990, however many years that is now, hard to keep track, uh, and started a recruiting business there in, in town and did that for a number of years. And uh, when the internet started, coming up in the late 90s, well, commercial for commercial business use in the late 1990s. I was really excited about that to see how we could apply that to business and uh, started a business called Mobscot Corporation, which is a more of a B2B company with enterprise software for human resources and uh, still run that today, more of a mainland focused for large organizations. My team is mostly on the mainland. And uh, now we've started Jam Bios to really see what we can do here locally as a local Hawaii company and something in the consumer side and something that I just think would be a really great thing for people to have. Mm. Hey, I love the name. And I suppose just <laughs> guessing now, if I went on the web and I typed out jambios.com, there, there you would be, am I right? Oh, there, yes, there we, we would be. We've actually been developing this for a number of years, um, being an entrepreneur for, yeah, an older entrepreneur, I guess I'll say, um, really wanted to spend time getting the product right and creating a, we created a really strong platform before we released it. And um, we started doing some uh, a real advertising and marketing toward fourth quarter last year. And uh, just like you, there are so many people out there that really understood that idea of this online memoir, being able to tell that story of you and being able to pass that pass that along and kind of build it out together. You mentioned the name of the company and the, the jam in Jam Bios is about the possibility and the opportunity to do this together with other people that were a part of your life. So as you're telling your story, um, there are so many people that were involved with your life. It's, um, it's quite amazing when, they st when other folks start to tell their side of the story or what they remember about your life or where your life intersected with them. Mm. Why do I feel that someday it wouldn't surprise you to get a call from Ancestry.com and they would say to you, <laughs> they would say to you, Beth, you know, we'd like to buy your company for a billion, zillion billion. What would happen then? 
Well, we'll have to see what kind of offer they make, Jay. <laughs> it really, it really does seem like this. That would be an interesting match because we're really talking about ancestors here, forward and backward, mostly forward. Um, and it, you know, it's 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 great to connect all that up. But I'm just I'm just thinking loosely. That's all. I'm trying to be creative mm -hmm. here. If I had to guess on how and how you're doing this. I would guess that A, this information resides in the cloud. Um, and that I, I and anyone else who I, who I authorize can get the information down off the cloud. And I can not only look at it, but I can comment on it. I can add to it. It's kind of a, I don't know, maybe this is the wrong analogy, but it's like a Wikipedia for me and my family. How close am I to say that? Um, you're pretty close. We have a couple of different ways that people can use Jambios. And, um, uh, one of the things about when you're writing or telling stories about your life is that there's a lot of private information in there. And there are some things that you're wanting to share with other folks. And there's other things that maybe you don't want to, or some things you might want to share with some people and not with others. So um, we've really built it with privacy in mind where everything starts very private by default. And you as the owner of your jam bio, uh, open things up as you choose to do so. And so I might invite you to see some of my stories or contribute to some of my stories when I write about being on Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, and I hope you will. Uh, there you go. <laughs> and so many memories. <laughs> and other things. So similar to what you say, and then we also have a, um, a, a group jam bio, which we call our jam bios, where you can set it up more as a group, sort of similar to like what you're talking about, where you can invite friends and family to all be a part of that particular group, and then all add different stories. It's, it's set up like a book with chapters and sections to make it really easy and understandable. So when you're doing a group jam bio, anyone that's a member can add different chapters and, and, and such. And we have a new product that's, I don't know if product is the right word, but we have a new version uh, that's we're working on now, which is, uh, going to be more of a public type jam bio. And it's interesting that you said Wikipedia because that's sort of the vision there around saving the world's memories and being able to have the one big great book of memories that's sort of a cultural piece where everyone can add memories, whether it's you know about where you were when certain historical events happened. Oh, sure. Or, right, or, or maybe just as you know, your memories of, of different, of your favorite dogs and things like that. So. We're starting from the my jam bios to the our jam bios to this sort of one big public jam bio. Well, you know, it's kind of like a diary, I suppose, in the sense that um, sometimes we don't want to do this. But the fact is that life is dynamic. Life is changing all the time. The thoughts I might have had in 1995, uh, I would be re really refreshed to go back and find out what I was thinking in 1995. Um, it would be refreshing to see the track of my thoughts over all the years since 1995. I'm just picking that year. So, you know, what you have is not only a static recollection, not only a, a static statement of, of life at a certain time, you have the possibility of, of, t of connecting the dots. Well, how, how fascinating would that be just for me alone? Not even family already. I mean, family even more so. But I could, I could give you the track of my life, what I was thinking when I was younger, and how my, my views changed. And how the circumstance, it's like a major diary, but it's personal. Um, and, and that is so interesting. So uh, I, I, is that possible on Jam Bios? Uh, yes, it is. Um, certainly we have some of our users that do use it sort of like a journal. But there are, frankly, a lot of different online journals out there. So we don't, I don't, I don't go into technology and things that are already available. Mm -hmm. I like to fill niches that are not there. And so we're looking at it a little bit more from that perspective of memories, because not only is it interesting what you say about going back and, and reading those thoughts, but there is some magic when you're writing them. And um, there's so much enjoyment to go back and you're thinking about, I don't know, just these stories that you're telling. And sometimes we do this just around the dinner table or at Thanksgiving or whatever, and you, you go back and you talk about. But it's um, especially today where things are so challenging in the world and the news can be really ugly and stressful. And I find for me personally, I really enjoy just going into my jam bio and just whatever I'm writing about, it's just so much fun. And then it gets even more fun when I invite others to participate in those memories and I get their additions to it. And um, 
I'm sure there's some brain chemicals that are coming out when, when yeah. you Yeah. Oh, when absolutely. I'm sure that's true. Writing, as some you said, things. writing is a really important um, experience. Um, and you learn, you learn about yourself from writing. You learn who you really are because you're, you're forced to express yourself. And then you can look at what you've said. But, I, you know, the, the thing about other people, that, that also fascinates me. And that is this, you know, so you go up and you go down. Some days are better than other days. Some days are really awful and some days are great. Um, and some days you really need support. Um, and, you know, in, in the nuclear world, um, we, we don't get a lot of support. We, we can't talk frankly with our uh, fellow workers, really. And, and friends are sometimes uh, shallow. Uh, I mean, our relationships with them, uh, they're not really um, intimate. And so you don't, you don't have a, a place where you can have intimate you know, connection. I mean, it's not so easy in these days. So, that, so that, you know, this, this offers the possibility that I can express my personal thoughts um, and my memories and my experiences uh, that are very personal to me. And then I can let somebody in on it. And I can yes. say, would you, would you look at my, my thoughts and memories and give me your feedback? Give me therapy, if, if you will. Uh, give me reaction, give me comfort, give me support on what I perceive my life to have been like. Has that happened too? Yes, this actually that brings up a couple of thoughts uh, in my mind. Um, one is about this social media today has become very curated for people and they're presenting themselves in how they want to be seen. And it's not always your real self and it's not always authentic. And you see the kids today with their Instagram and um, having to be a certain way um, that may not be real for them. And that's difficult and stressful to maintain that. Uh, whereas when you have that space and that privacy of something like a jam bio to really reflect, um, you are, it, it gives you just a new opportunity to be who you are, put that out there and only share it with those who you feel safe with mm -hmm. and, and that, that you would like to have the have them see that the other part that came to mind when you were talking is that we've we created something um that we added not that long ago called the community bookshelf so when you're writing any jam bio section that you write any memory any story that you write you can choose to put it on the bookshelf the community bookshelf and then any jam bios any person who's a registered member of jam bios which is by the way it's free to use free um Did you say yes, free I said free. So it's, it's, it's worth dwelling on how you do that. I mean, and why? We can talk about our revenue model uh, since we're talking about the business and entrepreneurial side. But um, yeah, so you can you can put the information out there and have it on the community bookshelf. Other people can read different memories from different people. Uh, they can comment and you can get feedback. And that's been really fun. We just started doing that and allowing people to follow other people on the community bookshelf. So you can take it even beyond your own family and, and friends if you choose to, or at least for certain of your stories. Well, just suppose, just suppose. And I mean, I, I, I don't really want this to happen or care that it happens. But suppose I get to be a global figure. Me. <laughs> All through you're think not, tech, right? You're not already? <laughs> in conversation, oh, wow. <laughs> in conversations with people like you. Okay, and, and I get famous. And now somebody wants to write a biography of me. What a trove of, of information. All I got to do is turn over the keys to my jam bios. And this person is, you know, he's three quarters of the way done with the biography. Uh, what do you good. think about that? It's done. I, I, I don't know if our users will find themselves in that particular circumstances, but we do hope that they will be able to do that with their family and their descendants and pass that along. And like you said, if you had the opportunity to find your great grandparents' journals, what a treat that would be. And we're trying to create that opportunity. And I'm thinking especially about the, our, our newest, um, I think our folks had sent over some information to you about what we're calling legacy jam bios. And the legacy jam bios is our um, opportunity for folks that we noticed that we have some older users who were kind of worried about how far that they would get in their jam bio or something happened to them. And what if this information didn't get to their kids where they meant it to get to? And so we thought, you know what, we really need to create a way that they can kind of pre-purchase into this legacy plan. And with the legacy plan, they don't have to worry about quote finishing. 
they can write as much as they want, whatever they want. If something happens to that, so if they sign into the legacy plan, we then send them a nice, beautiful document that they would keep with their special papers, those insurance papers, their trust documents. And when some, when that eventuality happens and the kids, you know how awful it is having to handle your parents' estates and all of that. You go through your documents, you find this lovely piece of paper saying, here's a secret code where you can get this. You're, you know, you're grieving, you're doing all this stress and trauma and you find this beautiful thing. You come to our website, you enter the code and you put in your mailing address. And now we've taken all those stories, we've cleaned them up, we've proofread them, we've added them, we turn them into a printed book and we send them out to based on whoever you, you know, whatever you purchased into your legacy plan. So we're really excited. We're just starting that now as we speak. And we really think that's a great opportunity for some of our, some of our older users. Oh, I totally agree. It's like a, it's like a, a, a will. Um, you, you, it's a will of information. You, you know, wills generally in, involve property. There's not a lot of communication of, uh, of mm -hmm. thoughts and uh, advice and suggestions, what have you. But this is a, is a will of information. It's a will of thoughts and advice and suggestions. And can you imagine the, the thrill of the recipient? I mean, I assume yeah. it's a positive, positive legacy <laughs> for the recipient. It could be a negative one just as well. Mm -hmm. Who, who gets that key and who, yeah. opens, who opens it and, and we hear what the, the decedent was thinking about and that, that particular individual and others yeah. in the family. Uh, what do you, yeah. you know, because you could go through your whole life and not be square and honest with your family for one cultural reason or not. You never tell them how you feel. It's all covered up. And now you have a chance to really tell them. You tell them what he did right, what he did wrong, your hopes, your expectations. Um, what an amazing moment that would be. It brings tears to my, to my eyes just thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. And I'll tell you an experience that brought tears to my eyes um, that we had a, a you, well, I have a user who was working on their jam bio and she asked me if I would look it over for her. And she was getting ready. She, we have a feature where you can turn it into a printed book. We call it a jam book. And she asked me if, she could, if I would look it over for her. I said, yes, yeah, sure, I'd be. I'd, be honored to do so and I started reading it and she wrote about her growing up and her parents and some things with that and then she her her uh, her husband and all of that and then she got her kids and she wrote about each kid and all the things that how she felt about them and all of that and we get to the end and I'm at the end of this jam bio and she reveals if you will that she has a terminal illness uh. and that this was her message of love this was her message of love that she love, wanted yeah to yeah it does love. yeah that's powerful yeah yeah oh my god you know all kinds of things come come flooding into mind you know you, yes I've, I've, I've had this illness yes I, I have a couple of children I didn't want to mention to you before uh, and here's some stories about the family I didn't want to tell you before um, and here's, you know, here's my thoughts about, um, you know, about you and about things in life in general that I didn't want to share with you. Now I'm sharing with you. Oh, that would be just dynamite. Powerful yeah, stuff. We've, yeah, we've seen some people, too, uh, write about lessons learned that they want to pass along. One of the things with the Jam Bios is to help people. We have all these different chapter types. So they can scroll through if they're not sure what they want to write about. They can scroll through the different chapter types to get ideas. And then we have question prompts that match each chapter type. So if you're whatever chapter you go into, there'll be a number of questions that come up to help you think about what you want to write about and just giving them some guidance along the way. Uh, and so we've seen people use it in many different ways. I don't know why, but this reminds me of Oahu Cemetery. I'll tell you the short story. Um, Oahu Cemetery has a play that's done by the Mission House Museum. And um, you walk around the cemetery and somebody is sitting there at a grave. Uh, and uh, the person stands up and he's, a, he's an actor and or her and uh, tells you the story of his life and, and how he, um, you know, had a business experience with Smith and Smith uh, screwed him in one way or another and he's mad at Smith and they got into litigation and so forth as part of his life. Then you walk down the other side of the cemetery and there's, the, there's the, the, the grave for Smith. Now an actor stands up for Smith and he tells you, you know, I had this fight with Jones and he's a bad guy. They're both dead, understand, yeah, 19th yeah. century.
But, you know, it's this thing. So I, I really wonder, this leads me to my question, I really wonder if you can compartmentalize the jam bios. So, and I want to I wanna send a message to, to Smith, but I don't want Jones to know about it. Uh, or yeah. I want to send a message to Jones, but, you know, I want to compartmentalize compartmentalize that so Joan Smith doesn't know about it. Can I do that? Yes, that's in fact the primary feature and why we have something like, we created something like Jam Bios as opposed to someone just writing in a blog or on a Word document or something like that. Because it gives you that opportunity where Smith can, you can give Smith access to these six chapters and you can give Jones access to these 12 other chapters or sections and kind of mix it up. And even when you're, if you're creating a printed book, our jam books, um, it's not just everything you wrote goes in the book. You know, that, that's too basic. Right. So how we do it is that you can pick, you pick what you want. So all of your chapters, everything you've written, all your stories show up, and then you just tick them off, just check off which ones you want for this particular book. So if you're giving a book to your kid and you want them to see all of this, but maybe you don't want them to see these six things, then just leave those out, print that book for them, and then print a different book for somebody else with those in them. So it's all about that control. And in today's world, you know, you talked about the beginning about talking about where it fits in the landscape of social media. And um, to, we've come to this sort of crisis in privacy. And yeah, I, and I want to talk about that right after this break. I was reserving myself to ask you about that very question right after this one minute break. Uh, Beth Carvin, Jam Bios, we'll be right back. Aloha and welcome to At the Crossroads. I'm your host, Keisha King. I'm live at five every Wednesday where we have entertaining and educational conversations that are real and relevant, both here in Hawaii and across the globe. I'll see you at the crossroads. Aloha. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go Beyond the Lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Okay, we're back. We're live with Beth Garvin. She joins us by remote from Kauai. She's the CEO of Jam Bios. So let's talk about privacy, Beth, because, uh, you know, that's really important in these days. Uh, we've seen so many breaches of privacy. Uh, how do, you know, I am not going to share my internal thoughts, my personal legacy information um, with anyone if I feel it can be compromised. How can you assure me it won't be compromised? Yeah, I, I mean, it's all about privacy today. And especially when we're dealing with something like people's personal information and um, these very, very private stories that they're writing. And again, um, you know, that's one of the reasons that we want to create Jam Bios because there is no good way to do that right now uh, where you can be assured of that kind of privacy. So my background working in the enterprise software space is all about secure or ha has to be about security. Um, when you're dealing with enterprise software, you have to have the most secure data center. We have to pass all of these different security audits. Um, you know, I'm, I'm an older entrepreneur, not a young kid at a school who doesn't realize the um, importance of security and privacy. And so that's, that's job one. And um, all of the jam bio, so from a security standpoint, we utilize the highest level data, uh, security data center on the mainland. Uh, where all the data is kept. We utilize uh, software engineering technology technology and practices for security. Um, and, our, and in terms of privacy as well, our privacy promise to our users is that we, we promise not to use this information um, for our own purposes. The users remain the owners of this information. Our job is simply to store it safely and securely for them. Mm -hmm. And then from a user standpoint, there's the whole aspect of, of um, like we were just talking about, of you choosing to share what you want to share with whom you want to share mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, even assuming now, assuming 
that I'm satisfied that this is not, not going to be, um, you know, disclosed, revealed to others. My privacy will be respected. I care a lot about that in this context. Um, assume that. What, what about the concern I might have about how long jam bios will last? Because we're talking about, by definition, this is all multi-generational. This isn't a five-year plan or a 10-year plan. It's more than that. I'm speaking to generations unborn. I'm speaking to my great, great grandchildren who I want to have, I want to have knowledge about me. I want to, I want to talk to them. Uh, mm -hmm. How can I be sure that your company will be around, that the, the cloud will be around, that this information will be available to them? Well, you can't if I'm going to be you know, honest with you. And obviously if I said otherwise, you would call me out on that because that would be ridiculous. Um, so the goal is to for people to have ways along along this journey to be able to have control of that data. Um, I'm taking care of it while you have it with me. Um, but beyond that, you, you know, you need to look out for your for how are you going to handle that as things change and things migrate. Um, we've built in some different things and certainly we have our print books, but we also have ways to turn this into PDF, uh, into PDFs along the way. So you can be saving it in a, um, a formatted way where we take all of your stories. We put it in the form of a, a, a formatted book with all your contributions from your friends and whatnot. Oh. Turn into an so I'm not going to say that I'm going to be that time vault where you can open magically open that up in the future. I don't, I can't speak to that, although we have been toying around with the idea of creating a physical library where people could um, choose to have a copy of their jam book. So they'd purchase an extra jam book that would go into a physical library somewhere. I don't, I don't know where that would be, where then their future generations could actually go and visit their jam book. Sort of like uh, Salt Lake City library. in reverse. Yeah, exactly. the, the Mormon library in Salt Lake City in reverse. <laughs> yes, yeah. So I, I, that, that's just something we're toying around. If people are interested in us actually storing that for them in a long-term basis. Yeah. You know, but, um, you know, I, I will take care of your data while it's with me and make sure that you always have it. Um, but I wouldn't want people to rely solely. It would be silly. I, I can't say what's going to be happening 100 years from now. In no, terms of how if I knowledge. if I get anxious about this, it sounds from what you said. If I get anxious about this, I can print it out, or I can yes. download it. Right? I can download it as a PDF. I can print it out. I can put it somewhere safe, and that's my yes. way of having a super backup just in case it's ever necessary. Yes. Can we I would delete? Encourage, my, can, go ahead. Now, I was just gonna say we would encourage people. We encourage people to do that. Can I delete my account? Can I wake up one morning and say, "Gee, I." I really don't want to have this around anymore. Maybe the feds are going to get me. <laughs> can I delete the whole thing? You can. You can delete all of your stories uh, within it. And then you could, uh, if you want to really make sure, you contact us and we'll delete it from all the backups and, right. and everything. There'll be, there'll be no trace of you, Jay. No trace of you. Last, last question. I love this conversation. Last question, Beth. And that is this. Um, you know, I mean, I can open a Word document. And, uh, or I can do a blog. I mean, it's free, no problem. Uh, I, do, I still want to ask you about your business model. Um, why don't I do that instead? It, isn't it just as easy for me to type this out with my little fingers uh, and, um, I don't know, put it somewhere safe? Well, why do I need Jam BIOS when I have all these other word processors and storage devices around me? You could. It, you could. And it depends on you and what you're looking to do. Um, the reason people use Jambios would be if they want that opportunity to share uh, easily um, different sections, different stories with different people. And if they wanted that kind of um, uh, collaboration in terms of getting other people to add to their stories, uh, make those stories richer. That's not something you're going to do with a Word document. Uh, in terms of taking care of that data, uh, as I mentioned, um, who knows what happens to the Word document. I see mine all go to into some black hole Oh, somewhere. yeah, we know about that. <laughs> <laughs> so we, can, we take care of that. We, you know, we, we're taking care of all of that data for you while you're using, while you're using this. Very system. valuable. Now we get to the, the last question, the ultimate question, is your business model. Why mm -hmm. do you do this? I mean, are you doing it for love? Because if that, if that were the case, um, it would be a wonderful gift to, to the community. But t tell me about your business model. Uh, well, 
I am an entrepreneur, and even though I, I, I am doing it, that I, I, I love this and I'm passionate about it, but uh, I am a business person. And we just see a number of different ways of creating revenue for us to be able to continue this. Without money, we can't continue this and, and maintain your stories. So we do need to make money. Uh, we have our printed jam books, of course, and we have premium features where we have the different covers that you can use and purchase that we've uh, put together and created. We have proofreading services. We have other add-on services. But ultimately, Jay, this is going into that we're also going to be uh, building out corporate jam bios. We wanna work with companies that have nostalgic brands. We wanna intersect our nostalgic users with those nostalgic brands and be able to allow people to think about their memories of their favorite brands. And a great opportunity for companies to be getting testimonials of really big fans. Everybody loves a story. Everybody loves memories. And we have a lot of stories about different brands of our favorite things that we've used. So it all intersects. We see a wonderful opportunity. There are lots of different ways that we can make money. Uh, and we hope people will give Jam Bios a try and um, help us build this community. That's great. That's great. The one thing that, uh, that, uh, that I, that I, I want to ask you about is the, is the testimonials. Yeah, but when you're talking about companies, it could be testimony, too. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> so you have to keep that in mind. You have to keep that in mind. Maybe what you need is a lawyer on your staff. And you can, with the, with the company bios, you can say it's all attorney-client privileged. There you, go. <laughs> there you go. I need a lawyer who really understands time capsules and all of these things. Time capsules in Kauai. It's so nice to talk to you about this. It's so nice to see entrepreneurs, creative entrepreneurs and software, especially this kind of software. This is, this is all positive, this software uh, being yeah. developed on Kauai. So good for you, Beth. Beth Carvin of, of Jam Bios. Thanks so much. Aloha. Thank you, Jay. Great pleasure.